Hello everyone. Welcome to our presentation on a master seminar in data science. Uh, my name is Shakar Miraj Mahfuz and my team members are, are, are Mr. Rajiv Chandradash and Mr. Mahmudul Hassan. Our selected topic was recommender system. We worked on the section one with these three papers and I'm going to talk about the first paper uh, which is matrix factorization techniques for the recommendation system. To understand this, we need to know why this recommendation system is needed. Uh, we all know most electronic retailers and content providers use this recommendation system to provide recommendation to their users. So uh, for this example, uh, we, take can, we can take example for Netflix, uh, which is actually recommending movies and TV shows. And also for products, we can take example from Amazon. And let's see the first of the problem definition. There was no um, formal definition for that problem, but this paper actually targets to solve a competition for which is provided by the Netflix. Uh, they actually um, provided $1 million prize for the first team uh, who will be improving their recommendation system by 10%. And if there is no team achieves this 10% mark, they will be uh, having $50,000 prize uh, with the best performance. Uh, so this is basically our main problem definition. And let's talk about recommender system strategies. There are actually two strategies much popular. Uh, one is content filtering and another one is collaborative filtering. In content filtering, uh, we are concerning ourselves with the characterizers and the nature of the product. And in collaborative filtering, we are um, uh, they actually proposed that user item association from the relationship and interdependencies. Uh, in the paper, they actually converge on collaborative filtering. So we need to think about the areas uh, the collaborative filtering have. There are actually two areas, primary areas for this. One is neighborhood method and one is Latin factor model, models. In neighborhood method, we can take, a, for example, if we consider a product, uh, let's for say a mobile phone, um, it has um, a neighborhood product such as headphones. So there, there is a big chance that if you buy a mobile phone, you, uh, we will be recommending a headphone for you. So this is actually neighborhood method. And in later factor models, what is happening here? We are taking uh, 20 to 100 factors for this and uh, uh, by the previous rating of those products. Uh, we are actually focusing on latent factor models because uh, this paper suggests the matrix factorization model, which is derived from the latent factor models. So this is the formal definition or for the basic model we have. Um, in this uh, formal definition, we actually focus on this equation here. And this equation shows a uh, a rating matrix which is factorized by two low dimensional vectors here qi and pu uh, pu stands for the user preference uh, and qi actually represents the item factor relationship uh, to better understand this we can see this picture here in this picture we see uh, this transpose vector in the left side and this a vector in the right side and the dot product of this generating the whole matrix. So uh, to better understand this uh, method, we can take another example uh, from this picture. In this picture, uh, what we are doing here, we are uh, having a matrix here. This is the matrix here. And this matrix represent the uh, rating matrix. And these are the two fake factors. Uh, we are using for this for movies let's for say we take comedy and action as a factor and also users have their preference on comedy and action and if we take example for user b he uh, she doesn't prefer comedy here and she prefer action and let's for movie three uh, it has one person comedy for, uh, weight and four for action point if we multiply this as a dot product we generate here four and that's how the matrix actually generates from these two factors. Uh, 
we move forward here uh, to learn this model we are actually using this minimization minimization of the regularized square error this equation we have and we actually re minim minimize this using known training sets here RUI is a known training set and we are compensating QI and PU uh, within iterations to uh, learn this model we uh, uh, have two kinds of learning model uh, learning algorithms in this paper they have shown these two uh, algorithms one is stochastic gradient descent and in stochastic gradient descent, what we have, what we cal uh, calculate is here, we can see this in equation. Um, in equation, we see that they calculate the error uh, between these two um, values and they compensate with this error, updating the QI and PU with this lambda parameter, which is the magnitude of the direction of the gradient. So that's how the stochastic gradient descent works. And there is another technique which is actually alternating least square and in this technique uh, the, uh, what is happening here this fixes the Q and update is the PU's and alternatingly fix PU again and update the QI's and it does until it converges the to the result so this uh, two methods are actually using to uh, for learning this model after this, our model uh, in the paper, we see they have improved the model by uh, adding some features. Let's first say they consider the bias at the first. Uh, we see there are some kind of bias towards the item and also from uh, user. So if we consider all of the biases uh, here, you can see mu, and this is the average overall rating, and bi and bu represents the deviation for item y, uh, i and user u. If we add all of the values with the previous model, we have the new model here. And if we use this new model in our learning paradigm, we will have this minimization problem to solve. And further, they have added uh, for in new input sources. In this input sources, we see that we are actually using, in this paper, we followed Boolean implicit feedback. And with this Boolean implicit feedback, they have normalized the sum and added this term with the user preference matrix. Also, we can also consider in this paper demographics such as age, gender, and use this distinct vector within the user preference matrix. So if we add three, uh, these two items with the user preference matrix, we have our new model uh, which is shown in this fifth equation further what is happening here uh, if we take temporal dynamics into the consideration what will have every biases and every user preferences changes with time so we can see that bi bu and pu these three terms becomes a function of time so that our rating matrix also represents a function of time inside its parameter. And also, uh, if we con uh, have some confidence level on such topic, like if a user um, rated an item multiple times, that item should be preferred more. So we introduce here a confidence level here. So this con uh, confidence level value uh, increase this minimization technique and it represents the new model so after adding those terms what is happening uh, here we can see an evaluation and experiment for our technique and in this technique we see this graph represents the uh, in the left side uh, the root mean square error and in uh, the uh, x-axis we see million parameter size so here this uh, uh, Color, colored lines are showing the models uh, in individually and uh, we see this uh, lower the value it will represent much more accurate results uh, for this competition the uh, point to beat was point 0 0.85 and here we can see uh, the temporal dynamics version 2 of the model almost reaches this uh, it's near 2.87 
So from this, we can actually judge this uh, method is actually superior to the previous methods. And uh, from these experiments, uh, I can give you an achievement value for this. This paper achieves the first prize uh, in 2007 and also in 2008 for this problem. And during the uh, writing of this paper, they were also the first people in this rank, uh, competition. So obviously, this matrix factorization method is a state-of-the-art technique. And in the conclusion, what I can say, this technique is a part of collaborative filtering. And this also gives a superior accuracy. And, and in fact, the memory efficient is much better than, than other techniques. And this integrates so much information um, inside, like multiple forms of feedback, temporal dynamics, and confidence level. Hello everyone, I am Mahmoudul Hassan, and I am going to present the second paper in our topics. And the name of the topic is Metagraph Based Recommendation Fission Over Heterogeneous Information Networks. So in this paper, they try to solve two problems. Uh, first, how to represent the high-level semantics of recommendation mm -hmm. and the second problem is how to fuse the heterogeneous information to make recommendation. Mm -hmm. To solve uh, these two problems, they use seven approaches and I am going to uh, <clears throat> and I am going to uh, tell about uh, the, the, all the steps uh, on by one. First, define metagraphs including L metapaths. So here we can see uh, the uh, formal definition of metagraph. Uh, it's a table of vertices, age, uh, object type, and relations, uh, uh, source node, and target node. Uh, this is the uh, picture of uh, metagraphs. If we take uh, the number nine, uh, we can see there are uh, some kind of uh, object types. So we can say uh, it's a user on object type, it's a review uh, object type, and we can see uh, uh, we can see the business object type and the aspect object type. So from this uh, graph, uh, suppose user on writes a review to a hotel, and another user user two writes a review to the same hotel. So. Uh, so in this uh, metagraph, uh, we can build a connection uh, between user on and user two, and we can recommend uh, another hotel which user two visited to user on. And we can see this is a acyclic uh, directed graph. The second step is calculate commuting matrix for each path. To calculate the commuting uh, uh, matrix, uh, they try to uh, calculate the matrix. From, uh, uh, this is the example. Uh, basically, this is the example of uh, M9. So first, they try to calculate uh, the matrix between uh, the uh, review and business. Uh, we can see it from here. It's the review and the business, and then. Uh, they try to calculate the matrix from uh, the reverse on from uh, R2 to BR. And uh, after that, they they calculate the same matrix uh, to review to aspect and the reverse on. And after they calculate those things, they use Hadamard product merge. and merge all the matrices. And by computing this uh, similarities between all uh, users and items along the metagraph M, we can obtain a user item similarity matrix R. Now I am going to discuss about two points together: the user similarity matrix, uh, matrices and matrix factorization on similarity matrices. In here, uh, they design L metagraphs, uh, and uh, they can get L different user item similarity matrices denoted by R on and uh, to R L. So <clears throat> the similarity matrices R can be factorized into two low rank matrices U and B, which represent the latent feature of user preferences and items. Uh, by, by this equation here, uh, 
uh, we can get uh, L groups of latent feature of user and item denoted as E1 beyond to UL BL. The fifth stage is design a recommendation model. Uh, actually, they, they design a recommendation model with the help of factorization machine. So, <clears throat> in this model, they concreted all the corresponding users and item feature from the uh, all the L metagraphs, and th this is the equation for that. And after that, they estimate all the ob observed rating using factorization machine. So this is the equation uh, of the factorization machine, uh, which is taken from another uh, paper. And uh, I'm going to discuss a bit in the next slide about it. And uh, after, after uh, calculating the factorization machine, uh, the parameters can be learned by minimizing the mean root square losses and uh, uh, loss. And this is the equation for mean root, uh, mean square loss. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the uh, picture taken from uh, another paper uh, and from uh, that paper uh, we can understand the factorization machine. Uh, there are five columns here. Uh, uh, the first column indicates the active user. The second one indicates the item. In our case, this is movie. And, and the third, uh, the yellow one uh, is the rating of that movie given by the particular user. The green column represents the time. And the <clears throat> last column shows uh, the last movie rated by the user. And finally, we get the prediction of a movie. So if we, if we uh, check the first row, here we can see a user A uh, give a uh, give a uh, like uh, rated a movie uh, uh, in this case ti means titanic and uh, the third one shows that the rating of that movie and this is the month in where the movie was rated by the user and the final outcome we can see that that five means on that particular movie titanic the user on can have the possibilities to rate five Now the sixth step of this uh, uh, problem solution approach is solve the computational cost with group lesser regularization. From the uh, uh, from the factorization machine, we can see the <coughs> computational cost can be high. So they reduce that computational uh, cost by using group lesser regularization, and this is the equation for this. With with this group tissue regularization during the uh, training process, this model can automatically select useful feature and remove the redundant ons in the group. And the finally, uh, model optimization. So uh, uh, we can see a uh, formal de uh, definition how it looked like the model uh, uh, the model form. This is the uh, model. Uh, we can show. Uh, write it on this form and this model is a non-convex and non-smooth so they use nm uh, so algorithm to optimize the object function now experiment and evaluation so here are the four uh, well-known uh, models which is uh, uh, used previously uh, for the same problem and they also uh, measure the performance with the root mean square error. Uh, in this below table, we can see uh, the density of rating metrics in the four data set they used on their paper. So uh, this uh, table actually taken from this, this paper and from this paper, we know that the uh, root mean square error, error uh, if that is low, then the performance is better. So, so FMG is the recommended system by them, which means uh, uh, factorization machine on uh, group, with group leso, uh, group leso. So we can see uh, all the uh, root square mean in all is like uh, considerably low on this method. If we take Amazon 2K, we can see uh, REG, SVD, 
uh, it can be improved by 60% by using FMG. So uh, definitely this is a, a good solution for this kind of problem. For calculation, we can say that uh, this uh, model is complicated semantics between users and items and also it learned from the unsupervised way and uh, the group uh, less so regularization factorization machine to fuse different groups of semantic information to extract from different beta graphs to predict the names. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Hello, I am Rajiv. I am going to discuss about the third paper. The title of the paper is Personalized Entity Recommendation, a Heterogeneous Information Network Approach. So, first I need to discuss about the problem definition. So, given a heterogeneous information network with a user implicit feedback, for a user, build a personalized recommendation model and recommend a rank list of items that are the interest of that user accordingly. They proposed uh, a solution with five steps. In the first step, they use the state of the art matrix factorization. Then they define L different meta paths connecting users and items. After that, they calculate user preference diffusion matrix. And, up, and then uh, they just define a um, recommendation model and finally they optimize the recommendation by by, by by same probability method so I am going to discuss those steps uh, first I, I will start with matrix factorization so this matrix factorization is already discussed in the first paper so I am not going to talk about details about that just I need to mention here we have a simple matrix if a user has an interaction with the item the, in the matrix in the matrix yeah they will have i mean it will have a value one and if there is no interaction it is zero and this matrix is factorized by two lower matrix a uh, lower fa uh, factor matrix u and v so after the matrix factorization they define l different meta paths so i'm going to discuss about what is l met, uh, meta paths are, how the meta paths are so as you see uh, here we have two examples uh, P1 and P2. This P1 and P2 uh, is considered as metapath. So metapath basically start uh, with a user and end with an item. So here we can consider E1, E2, E3 is item, E1, E2 is user and those are uh, pretty basically uh, other uh, preferences. Maybe here we can consider this an actor. So here we see if a user view a movie and that movie also viewed by another user. If that user follows an actor, so some movies of that actor can be recommended for this user. So this is an example of metapath. Uh, so similarly, they define uh, this L different metapaths uh, uh, to build uh, and build the recommendation. And next, they calculate user preference diffusion matrix. Uh, here, uh, I need to discuss um, what is actually user preference diffusion matrix. So first uh, score. So this score is between 0 and 1.0 uh, based on particular uh, meta path and score is calculated for previously unobserved user item paths or if we go back here you can see from user 1 to user uh, item E1 so they calculated a value 0 0.5 this is uh, actually uh, 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 user preference division score. So value close to 1.0 means that user is more interested to a particular item and score can be calculated by pass sim. This pass sim is actually is another state of the art uh, solution. Uh, it is, uh, I found this picture from a different paper and um, yeah, this is the equation. So I'm not uh, going to discuss about uh, this more. Just uh, need to uh, mention that meta, uh, this is basically meta path based top care similarity search in heterogeneous information network. So after uh, calculating all the diffusion matrix, uh, I mean uh, that this diffusion matrix is calculated for all L different metapaths. 
and also uh, they denote this um, preface matrices as R1, R bar 1 and uh, and R, uh, dotted RL so far. In the next step, they build a recommendation model. So the recommendation model is uh, uh, calculated by three steps. In first step, they apply matrix factorization on diffusion preface matrix. So similarly, like from the uh, like uh, like the first step, uh, here you can see uh, after uh, calculating the diffusion matrix score, uh, then it is also factorized by uh, two different uh, lower factor matrices, and then for each user item pair, they define a weight, and after that, they to make it personalized recommendation, they define a separate cluster or uh, cluster of users who have the similar preference. And for each user item pair, they define a personalized model with the help of cosine similarity. So the equation is pretty basic like this. And that's how the recommendation model is built up here. And finally, they optimize this by bias and probability method. So here I am just going to uh, give you the overview of this method. Uh, um, it is used to estimate the recommendation parameter from the implicit feedback data. Uh, they use stochastic gradient descent. Uh, uh, to learn during the calculation and uh, the time complexity of learning process is uh, uh, big O of m n square here m is the number of user and n is the number of items so those are the pretty basic the steps to kill uh, to recommend the items uh, to the user and now i'm going to discuss about the evolution and experiments of this paper so as you, as you can see here uh, they defined an uh, uh, several meta paths like user movie tech movie uh, this n means basically this movie tech movie this uh, path can be uh, uh, can be present here several times so here uh, they work on four different meta paths for, uh, for the imdb data and also they did work for four uh, different meta paths for yield data so here uh, we can see several widely deployed state of the art in the recommendation approaches. The first one is uh, popularity. Uh, uh, popularity is uh, basically this recommend the popular items to the user. Uh, then we have cool clicks, NMF, and hybrid as well. Those are uh, um, several widely deployed state of the art uh, the, uh, for this recommendation model calculation. So they uh, uh, compare their solution to those uh, state of the art uh, deployed uh, recommendation models. So here uh, I found this uh, table from the paper uh, to uh, um, for the evaluation. So here they calculated MRR for each different um, set of the art solutions. Uh, here hat rate G and hat rate P, those are uh, their proposed model. And this MRR basically stands for mean uh, reciprocal rank. So and hat rate G and hat rate P the proposed and here uh, we found uh, some uh, nice differences how the solution how, how good the solution is uh, for example hatred g improves the mrr by 6.1 percent compared to traditional nmf solution for the imdb data and 10.4 percent for the el data set and hatred p this solution is my this puts surpasses NMF by 12%. So basically, this means this solution is uh, pretty good uh, so far. And also, this beats the MRR score of CoClick by 38% in EL dataset. So head rate P is really good solution uh, for recommendation model. So overall, the proposed recommendation models outperform all the comparison methods in both IMDB data and EL dataset. So that's so. In conclusion, we can say uh, this is a generic recommendation framework for implicit feedback data set. Uh, this recommendation models at both uh, global and personalized levels. And also, personalized recommendation models can be efficiently generated on the fly. So, thank you for listening to this video.